Welcome back to Crazy Love Studio. In this video, we will look at upgrading Networker to 19.4 on Linux and also at the new features in this version. Networker version 19.4 is in general availability as on 10th November 2020 with an end of life on 30th November 2023. So first let's look at upgrading Networker to version 19.4. So on your screen you will see that I am on Networker 19.2. Let's go ahead and upgrade our Networker. First let's go ahead and check our RPM versions so G2O. right so we have all the uh, packages on 19.2 so let's go ahead and see where our packages this is the 19.4 package i'm compressing this now the file has been uncompressed and let's go into the Linux folder. So the upgrade to 19.4 itself is very simple and if you have already seen the earlier upgrade videos, it is similar to it. So let's go ahead and try and upgrade. So the components I have is client, serve, nmc, node, auth, extended client and man pages. So let's go ahead and install them. Uh, we have the auth c. We have the client, client, the man pages, uh, the NMC, uh, node. We will be installing the NMUI because there are some enhancements on NMUI that I want uh, to show you. Uh, there are a few other changes that I notice in the installation files. So earlier there was no DB package available for Networker server or for um, the auth C service, but I see those packages now. So I believe they have expanded the support for uh, Linux on DB in uh, platform as well. All right, let's go ahead and hit enter and complete the installation so if you have already seen the video on enhancements related to 19.3 you would remember that we do not need to run the OTC configuration and the NMC configuration over again if in case you're doing the upgrade so the same configuration is um, so the same configuration is carried forward without any reconfiguration required all right so the installation is completed let's go ahead and look at the summary so here you will see that all the packages are installed and it's just giving a note that we have to use the license server if we are using a served license or unserved license uh, just for the local uh, license then it is talking about removing uh, the previous versions and then this is about the C. so it is stating that if you want to change the configuration then we need to rerun this Otherwise, this is what the configuration is uh, considering and this is the same kind of information for the NMUI as well. So it is considering the same configuration uh, uh, as seen in uh, the existing uh, setup and this is for the NMC. So all of them are going to consider the same configuration that it had earlier. So on 19.2 or earlier, you you, sh uh, you had to run all these uh, configuration scripts all over again. So let's go ahead and start the service. So now we see that all the services have come up. I think we should be able to connect NSR watch now. Okay, there you go. And uh, if you see the version, it is now on 19.4 build 25. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at the different enhancements that 19.4 has brought our way. The first one is regarding the NMUI or the Networker Management Web UI. So get, to get on the Networker Management uh, Web UI, use the URL with the host name and the, or the IP address of the Networker server, colon 9000, followed by uh, NWUI. So this is what you need. Let's go ahead and log in. Uh, the few enhancements that are in the NMUI is that the dashboard 
we can use the dashboard to view the summary of the active sessions and alerts. You can view the alerts, uh, the current alerts that are on your network server. Here I have one for not connecting to the data domain and the other for um, the evaluation license being uh, going to expire because I haven't applied any licenses. Uh, then we have the monitoring tab where you have uh, the active session device and server message monitoring enabled. So these are the server messages which is nothing but a log. Then you have the active sessions which are the sessions uh, in progress uh, and as well as the device status as well. So you have just one device here. So whatever you can do on the monitoring tab on the NMC can be done here as well. Next is that uh, you can now create and update label templates, media pools, storage nodes and devices. So device creation is supported only for data domain. So uh, this part, so that is label template pool devices and data domain systems. You can also create and update lock boxes, which is under server here. So uh, this is again something new with uh, this version of Networker. Uh, you can also create and update user groups and uh, you can also browse for uh, indexes for file level recovery which is the recovery part of uh, networker so if I go ahead and say traditional and select something here I don't think I have anything in backup it's been a while since I've done any backup so Anyway, this, this um, feature is now available. Uh, next feature is uh, related to the uh, enhancements in the API, the REST API for Networker. Uh, the documentation states that uh, it has made API marketplace.dell.com made available with the REST API details for Networker as well, but um, I am not able to access this website uh, at the moment uh, maybe in a couple of days or maybe it's done for maintenance I'm not sure but uh, you can also get all this information in the rest API guide that is available on uh, the support site next feature is also related to rest API the rest API uh, the next feature is also related to rest API and uh, this is regarding the rest API support for exchange protection so starting with 19.4, you can use the REST API to perform all critical operations such as client configuration, backup, restore, cloning, retention, time, and so on that are required for the exchange workload protection. So the next feature is NVE enhancements. So the availability of NVE in VMware vSphere, Microsoft Azure, and AWS with the SUSE 12 SP5 base operating system. Now this supports for uh, this support is for fresh deployment of NVE and also for direct direct upgrade from releases of uh, NVE version 9.x, 18.x and 19.x. Availability of NVE appliance in AWS market for EMEA region support for AWS M5X large and M52X large type instances in AWS. Next feature is related to the Networker GDPR data integrity compliance. Networker 19.4 has enhanced to audit the events that can be performed on a safe set. So whatever safe set state changes are done, those are also now added to the logs to be audited. Next and one of the most prominent enhancements of features in 19.4 is that starting with this version, you can now designate a state for the client. So there are three states basically. One is the active state, uh, retired state and decommissioned state. So active state, uh, the client is part of an active backup and has safe sets associated with with it and uh, the retired state uh, client is no more part of an active backup but still has safe sets associated with it. Decommissioned is where client is no longer part of an active backup and does not have any safe set associated with it. So client is uh, in the retired or decommissioned state is not part of the networker DNS lookup or startup validation. This ensures efficient backup and validation operation as long as DNS failure lookup operations are avoided. There is also reduction in failed backup given that these clients are not 
part of any policies. Uh, also, the network startup time had reduced by two to three, uh, where 40 percent of the clients are the retired or decommissioned states. Another most important change is that now we have browse and retention policy uh, separated in network. So not here specifically, but if I go to any of the workflows and action. So now if we go next. Yeah, I'm sorry, go back. So now you can see that we have browse period and retention period, which are separate entities. So earlier to version 19.4, we had only retention period uh, where the browse period was the same as retention period. But uh, in some cases, it's a problem wherein you have a very dense file system and you do not want to keep all those indexes all the time because it fills up your index file system. Uh, this comes in very handy there. So this had been taken up as an RFE and completed in 19.4. The next uh, feature is related to Networker Client FQDN compliant uh, with RFC 1124. So in the earlier version of Networker, the Networker server, the storage node and the client could be configured with the FQDN of up to only 63 characters. So starting with 19.4, the Networker storage node and the client are RFC 1123 compliant and can be configured with an FQDN up to 255 characters. However, the FQDN for the networker server is still limited to 63 characters. Uh, the next feature is regarding the disk space monitoring. So individual alerts are generated for each networker client whose occupied disk spaces go beyond 80%. So these alerts are non-persistence and gets cleared automatically when the occupied disk, disk space goes below 80%. Uh, after the services are up and running, if, the, if there is low space, one of the alerts, info, warning or emergency is generated based on the disk volume occupied. Disk space monitoring on a server node is for NSR and index if both are in different uh, volumes. Otherwise, it is for the disk and that contains the NSR directory. Similarly, for all the standalone clients, it is for the disk which contains the NSR directory. So next feature is about clear persistent uh, alerts. So to clear persistent alerts from the alerts window on your NMC, which is here, are these alerts, um, after a certain period, an attribute clear interval has been it, uh, introduced to the NSR resource. So this can be found here under uh, alerts uh, in the server property. So you have this event clear interval, which is currently set to 78 hours. So only the alerts generated due to the code dump of networker processes are considered persistent. So after the specific duration in the um, event clear interval is exceeded for a generated alert, the respective alert is cleared. Uh, the default value is 72 hours and the attribute can take anything from an hour to up to 14 days. Uh, the next feature is block-based backup support for XFS file system. Uh, so starting from this version, you can enable block-based backups for XFS uh, file system as well. Next feature is networker support for Ubuntu 18.04 LTS platform. So starting with networker 9.4, uh, I think we this is something that I had pointed out during the upgrade. Uh, so starting with this version, networker server, storage node, and networker client deployments are supported on Ubuntu 18.04 platforms. So next uh, feature is regarding the restore support for independent persistent disks. So this is for the image level backup. So vProxy backs up only the independent persistent disk configuration without any data. Uh, this is the independent persistent disk. That is, the independent persistent disk is restored as raw, unformatted disk in the guest operating system without any data. On restoration, the independent persistent disk has the original size and is part of the virtual machine configuration with the same disk number. If you select a virtual machine that has independent persistent disks for image restore, you are notified about the presence of this independent persistent disk. Uh, next is about disabling SNMP trap while the networker server is in maintenance mode. So we usually tend to have 
the ticketing tool integrated with Networker via SNMP and in case you have to do any maintenances, you now have a feature of disabling this uh, SNMP so that you do not get multiple tickets uh, during your maintenance window. So I assume everybody is uh, aware of how to put a server in maintenance mode, if in case you're not, all you have to do is go to the server, go to the properties, go to security and under configuration here you have to say no to uh, accept new sessions and no to accept new recovery. So when you do this your server is in maintenance mode and uh, during this if there is any failure or anything that uh, occurs the SNMP traps are not generated. So let me put them back. So next is a, about the NSR cap info. So starting with networker 19.4 uh, you are allowed to provide the start date and end date for NSR cap info measurement. So it also provides client level granularity with parameters such as daily peak usage, daily maximum cumulative report, overall peak usage and overall maximum cumulative report. So let's just go and see what this does. So as you can see it gives you the complete information about your current uh, utilization of uh, the network server. So it's all in uh, XML format so if you are aware about the XML you will be able to read this easily. So this is regarding the current uh, state of your network server, uh, the version, the operating system version, uh, the network server version and uh, the license type. So right now it is unlicensed because I am still running the trial uh, version of this, then the number of clients, how many DBs, uh, DB types. Uh, how many file systems? So file system I have uh, 34.57 GB protected, estimated capacity, date of measurement. So this is by default it measures to 60, G, uh, 60 days. So now with this version you can change this. So these are all the parameters that you can give. So uh, as you have mentioned we can uh, pull out the report at the client level, the number of days, start time, end time. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, so these are all the features for 19.4. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, share it with our community in the comment section below or you can drop me a message at my Twitter account. I will see you on another video. Goodbye.